All right, and welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trade. Today's Friday, December 2nd, 2022. If you're not done so already, give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, here, uh, market's doing a little bit more backing and filling today for the most part. So, Spider's down a third of a percent, Triple Q's down two-thirds. And the Dow here basically flat on the day. Um, markets did go green briefly um, about 20 or 30 minutes ago, and then we did back off the highs here. Um, again, not really too much of a change from yesterday, really just kind of, um, uh, so we said yesterday was basically just a pause day. You have a big surge in uh, the spiders, and it's typical to take a breather. And I think we're kind of continuing to do that right now. You can see we just basically back tested that 402, 403 area. So this was your previous uh, resistance, right? We came up here, we stalled out right there at 402.31. Um, made a slight higher high there, just under 403. Um, and then we backed off and now we're, you know, kind of just back testing it here um, on the spiders there. So it does look like, you know, it's kind of just a case of uh, resistance becoming support and market just kind of just backing off here off of those highs after the big surge. Um, there's no real problems out here right now. For right now, you do have... Um, this is so far um, a trend line rejection on on the uh, you know from that all time high, but this isn't um, this isn't a decisive. It's not an impulsive sell off, right? Um, we're backing off of it and we're just kind of consolidating. So when you see that happen, um, this does tell you that the market can and probably wants to do it does want to go a little bit higher. Um, still hasn't gotten up to that four twelve area. Um, I do think that has to happen at least. And it probably will happen by next week. And then again, obviously, your bigger level is the up, this upsloping trend line there, which also kind of coincides with this pivot, uh, major pivot up here around 420. Um, but again, um, no real new developments here today. Uh, market is kind of backing off on later volume. It's a Friday um, and the market doesn't seem to be bothered by too much here. So um, the Russell 2000, for what it's worth, is green today. You see the IWM there. So that is um, holding up. And again, this isn't a terrible pattern here on the weekly. Um, again, you know, up move and you're kind of just chopping. So this does, you know, suggest that maybe it can get up to that 195 area after all. Um, so just, again, really just kind of a consolidation day across the board. Um, you see triple Qs here again, um, you know, up move and then a big pop. And now it's just kind of an inside pattern here from this move here. We can see the semiconductors, which... Um, looked a little bit softer and they were that they are still are kind of underperforming just a little bit relative to the spiders um, without you know that's basically into double top as of yesterday versus the spiders which actually pushed through that previous high from the 15th but this pattern here isn't terrible and if we look at the weekly time frame um, which is more dominant you know you have a you have an inside bar here um, so you have you know power bar there one two three inside so it's certainly uh, possibility that we can push up a little bit higher and I think that is probably likely um, I don't think there's that much more upside and I think you know if we get you know the more upside that we get going into the next FOMC the harder it's going to be for the market to continue to rally post FOMC um, Jerome Powell has made it clear exactly what he's going to do um, they're going to they're probably going to do a 50 basis point hike um, which is exactly what the market expects at this point. And I would think if you get a dovish reaction um, or if you get a positive reaction from the market and we're already, you know, if we just flip over to the spiders here, like let's just say we, you know, we consolidate a little bit and then we push up into that FOMC. And if we bid up off the FOMC, I mean, that's probably going to be a, about as good of a sell the news as you're going to get um, because the market's basically been trying to price this in for the last month or so, maybe even longer than that. Um, and that's just the way markets work, right? You know, it's, it's, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news. Okay. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. Again, that's getting a little bit of a hat of ourselves right now, but for right now, um, the big level here on the spiders is 412 for now, um, above that. And then it's really this upsloping trend line there, um, which is the previous head and shoulders neckline triple Q's, um, same thing. So you kind of have that upsloping, uh, yellow channel here. And that area kind of locks right into that 300 handle. And I've been telling you guys for a while, I think the tri uh, triple Qs probably would get up to that 300 handle, maybe pierce it, and then that would probably be your kind of max move. Um, and again, that does coincide 
with this trend line going back to April and the 200 day moving average. So there's a pretty good amount of resistance up there. Um, but for right now, we're still a little bit of ways away, um, but we'll see what the queues do over the next couple of weeks. Uh, getting over, so we talked about the semis again. I'm still looking at 235, 240 here in the near term if we get a bid. Um, but for right now, no real problems here with the SMH cloud software is still on the weak side. Um, again, not a terrible pattern, you know, um, you do have an up move and now you're consolidating sideways, but this is so, this is like so far from what I would call a robust move off the lows, um, you know, versus pretty much all the other indices and asset classes. This is still very weak. So be careful with cloud here moving forward. Uh, Dow transports again, not a terrible pattern, right? So up move, you know, down higher lows. It's still, it's still holding up. Okay. You still have that divergence though, lower highs versus the spiders with the higher highs. That doesn't mean that the Dow won't, the Dow transports won't make a higher high. It just means that there's, there's laggard ship here in this sector. And that is a, a caution flag for the market, if you ask me. Um, but outside of that, I still think we probably get up to that 15,000 area, um, especially in, that would logically, that would likely coincide with those levels I've given you on the spiders. So that the upsloping blue trend line and so on, and possibly that level on the, on the triple Qs as well. Anyways, interest rates here. So 10-year did back off a little bit. So down 65 basis points. Again, this may get down to that 3-4 area. The 30-year uh, backed off even more. So that was down 2% here. So that probably wants to get closer to the 3-4 area as well. Um, I will say the TLT is into weekly resistance, though, just so you guys are aware. Um, yesterday, I said 106 and change. It's, it's almost up to 107 now. Um, you know, it's had a nice surge. You give it the benefit of the doubt. We had good volume yesterday. So we'll definitely pay attention to that. And this is definitely acting as if there's going to be a recession, um, as if it, as if there isn't already a host of, of reasons that, of evidence that that's already going to happen. Um, but that's what the 30 years doing right now. It is into some short term resistance. I do expect it to, to at least back off next week, but we'll see what we get. Um, the 30 year behaving well, the two year is not behaving well, though. Um, that did back off again today. And that, of course, as you can imagine, uh, put pressure on the yield curves again. So 210 basically back near to 52 week lows and really multi year lows at this point, three month tenure inverted by 83 basis points now, 83 and a half as a matter of fact. Um, and then we had uh, fives and thirties down as well and uh, tens and thirties down as well today. So um, those curves uh, flattening a little bit more as well. So um, two year, not in good shape, 30 year um, flashing warning signs as well. So we'll continue to watch that. Um, really just more of the same here for the market. Market doesn't seem to be bothered by it right now, but um, uh, it would definitely will be eventually in the future. Anyways, uh, Home Builders XHB, again, not a terrible pattern here. I still like this. Um, this is, um, you know, you still have an inside bar here. It, it's a little bit concerning that it didn't break out yet, um, but it's there's still nothing wrong with it there on the XHB. ITB, same thing, although the ITB is a little bit stronger here. Remember, this does have some retail names in it, so it's a little bit of a... A um, little bit of a different dynamic there, but this is still okay. If you ask me, VNQ backing off a little bit today looks like everything else. Again, targets haven't changed there. Um, again, the upside is right 93.50 to 94 bucks there on the VNQ. So no problems right now. XLF also backing off a little bit. This was on a little bit. I noticed XLF's a little bit on the weaker side today here. Some of the banks, um, JPM. Um, Bank of America, Goldman, a little bit, you know, just at least the last couple of days have been seemingly lagging just a little bit. Um, so possibly a little bit of rotation coming out of some of these names here. And I think that will be a theme next year, possibly quarter one. Um, they're holding up right now. And I think a lot of these names that have rallied lately, and I was just talk telling my members about this, specifically with like Exxon, um, you know, OXY, Conoco, Chevron, you know, you're starting to see some of these funds, um, I think, maybe trying to hold some of these names into end of year or, or at least close so that they can put that on their end of year statement and show a profit because they've gotten destroyed on all these other gro growth names, you know, the NVIDIAs and the Teslas of the world. Um, so that could be something here, but it does look like this is, you know, it might be might start to see some of this rotation out of financials as we do head into a recession in early 2023. Um, this is a sector you're not going to want to be long uh, when those earnings reports start coming in on banks and they get and they start getting destroyed on those yield curve spreads. So um, just something to keep an eye on moving forward. As for right now, XLF is okay and we'll just leave it at that. Market is closing right now. There is the closing bell. 
Um, so we're closed now for the week. Spiders ending down 14 basis points for the day. Q's down 0.4 and the Dow scratched out again. So, um, you know, golf clap for the Dow there for holding up again. This one possibly wants to go up and test around 35,000. Um, we'll see what that does next week. But um, in any case, let's get back to it. Uh, broker dealers here pushed up almost to that 490 handle. So again, I'm trying to see if it can get up to there to that double top here in the near term. But what can you say? Broker dealers are just really holding on well. And again, same kind of deal, right? This is um, a sector that has outperformed all year long. Take a look at the June lows, 363, and it's almost back to 500 now. Um, so big move there for XBD. Um, but towards the end of the year, this is going to be a problem, or I should say, really starting next year, this is going to be a, a problematic sector, if you ask me. Uh, over to energy now. So crude did back off a little bit today. Not the greatest close on the weekly. I would have liked a little bit more. I would like to follow through today. Um, it's holding up well. I'm a little bit kind of uh, neutral on crude right now, as I've kind of maintained to you guys over the last week or two. Um, but it's a hanging in there. We'll see what it does next week. I, I think that 30 year, it's, it's really going to be about yields here. Um, yields haven't, you know, the 10 years backed off nicely, but it hasn't like completely barfed or anything. It hasn't completely dumped. So I still think there's a chance you could get a push up here in yields. Um, if we get some type of news, um, China, I, I don't know. Um, it, the market's telling me that it's, it's not, the yield trade isn't quite ready to be abandoned yet. Although you are seeing strength in, you know, TLT for instance, um, this is still in a big downtrend for right now. It's just, it's a good rally here. Don't get me wrong, but it's still in a downtrend right now. And I'm not convinced of anything right now as far as commodities or, or really, um, crude specifically there. Um, but in any case, nice, nice reaction off that trend line. Um, I, I would have liked this a lot better if you went straight down into it and pierced it and you got a really nice reaction off of it, but it, it's not. You know, this isn't a power bar. I know we like, you know, I want to see a bar like that off of this trend line. That would tell me that, okay, there's probably a bottom in here in crude. Um, but with right now, it does look like the market is trying to price in recession risk and figure how that is going to work out. Anyways, XLE um, down a little bit on the day, down 60 basis points here. Again, it's holding up. And again, it's kind of in that same camp where it looks like there's some distribution going on here. But it does look like they may want to hold this up for the next couple of weeks, um, at least until those end of year statements come in, or at least close enough to that. Um, but for right now, XLE is hanging in there okay. XOP, OIH, same thing. So no real issue. OIH did manage to scratch out a gain today. So um, nice job there. Um, uh, Nat Gas here, nice dump. So back below back below all four major moving averages. They were all kind of minor at this point, but it is a little psychological level. Um, we'll see how this does. I would say it probably wants to test six bucks. Um, I would like for it to take these lows out, and then I think you can start to look to, to possibly accumulate this. Um, but we got to see... I got to see a little bit more, but that's a nice little rejection there. So we went up here, we tried to make kind of bullish consolidation a little bit, and that failed. So we should get a dump. I would like to get a little dump here in net gas. We played, traded this a couple of times recently, made some really nice money both times, really easy money too, like quick couple days in and out. Um, and uh, we used uh, Boil, which is two, two times long net gas. That one is a, a serious uh, a rocket ship of an ETF sometimes. But either way, net gas down 7%, so big dump there. Um, we'll see what it does. It probably wants to go test six. We'll see how it reacts off that. Um, and then we'll kind of play it by ear there. But I would definitely... Be interested in getting into it again. It just needs to uh, give me the right setup here. Uh, dollar index, again, backing off a little bit. So down 18 basis points. Um, again, it's starting to trend down here on the daily. We had a little bit of a micro kind of sloppy bearish consolidation. It did have a nice double bottom the other day, but, um, you know, the Fed news, of course, just dumped everything, you know, made everything do a 180. Um, so micro bearish choppiness, it's starting to play out. First level is 104, and then there's a couple more levels below, around 103 or so. Um, but I don't think the dollar is necessarily done either. It's just, um, it's doing backing and filling here. Again, I still don't think it's, it, I, it hasn't up, it hasn't achieved its upside objective based on the calculations I've done. But, um, you know, it is in backing and filling mode. It is correcting. So we'll respect that for the time being. Gold, on the other hand, nice, um, you know, this is not terrible. I, you know, it is red today down, uh, you know, about three bucks on the day, which is nothing, but an inside hammer, there's no real problems with that. So you blew through the 200 moving average after a higher low, and now just a little bit of a pause day there. Nothing wrong when you see that on um, gold futures, GDX here, a little bit of an inside day as well, gap down and then kind of rallied back up. 
Um, no confirmation above the 200 day moving average, but I don't see any problems either. Um, went and rallied right up into that 50 week moving average. You know, maybe it probably stalls out here for, I would say next week. Um, it's definitely possible. It's had a nice move off the low, so maybe it needs to do some digestion. But gold um, holding up really well right now and um, we'll definitely respect it. Silver through my targets now, right? I told you guys uh, been for probably almost a month now, 23 bucks is where it's gonna go. Um, it's through that. I said 23 and change is likely. And the high of the day here was 23.47 spot five. So nice move there for silver, one, two, three up. Again, this is little stretched here short term. It probably needs to do some backing and filling. I've traded this several times uh, over the last couple of months. Yesterday, we took a nice gain on the second half of it, over 20% on SLV. So nice trade there. I will look to do this again. I like silver a lot in this situation. So um, if you guys want to get in on that, come join carnivoretrades.com. We're having a killer year this year. Uh, platinum, um, it's bucked the trend a little bit, down 3% on the day. But again, this is still... Even despite this little pullback, this is just a little stretched here. I think it just needs to do some more digestion. This is going up to double top eventually. But uh, right now, I think it's just in kind of a consolidation mode for now. So platinum just hanging in there. But it did have a nice little dump here on the day. Still held that 20 moving average there for what it's worth, though. Copper, nice day today. Um, it needed it, too, because, again, that, that ugly engulfing reversal last, or not last week, but the week before, um, really put a damper on that rally there. And he had a nice week this week, so up 1% on the day, holding that 20-week moving average. We'll see what it does. You need to really get above uh, 396 on a weekly close, though. But um, ultimately, just a lot of chop shop right now with copper, but it's hanging in there okay. So we'll give that the benefit of the doubt for now. Uh, Bitcoin today, possible, you know, it may possibly be putting in a little bit of constructiveness here. So bigger, big picture, right? Still inside pattern here of this red candle. So still bearish. Um, but right now, you know, you kind of you had that little micro kind of double bottom there. And then we rolled around and then we popped up here the other day. And now we're just inside of that, that green bar. So a possible micro bull flag here starting to build up on Bitcoin. Um, let's say... It's about 600 points. You know, that could take, yeah, I mean, that would probably take you back up to about 18,000, right where that 50-day um, moving average is just above there, perhaps. Um, it's not a huge pattern by any means. It's not like a power pattern by any means. You're still well inside of this, but possibly a little bit of constructiveness here um, heading into the weekend here. And maybe the low liquidity of the weekend will give it a little bit of bid. But again, uh it, it, I think at this point, right, it's just a matter of time before another desk blows up and then we get uh, more news of that regard. So that doesn't change the big picture. I'm still looking for the low, you know, probably 11, 12,000, somewhere in that area is the ultimate target of this move here. Um, but for right now, that doesn't mean it can't, you know, have a counter trend bounce or something of that nature. Um, so around that 18,000 area, I think is where that would want to go based off of that little pattern. Anyways, um, yeah. Uh, back to the spiders here. So again, we're still rejecting this trend line for now, but it's still minor, and we're not getting a we're not getting a uh, a robust you know refusal or rejection. It's just it's just stalling here. So that doesn't mean we can't go higher. Um, you have to be aware of that if you're uh, looking to short this market right now. This market is not um, in it. It's not showing any sort of indication that it's ready to dump just yet, but it will be um, in the future. I am certain of that. So anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you guys all next week.